Hello everyone and welcome back to Reentry, an orbital simulator which is currently in early access version 0.106 and what I'm going to do in this episode is to do the Project Gemini lessons and I really will do the lessons this time. Last time I did the Mercury mission, ultimately the full mission exam here and then also Mercury Atlas 6 and then uh, there was some issue late in that mission that prevented me from completing it. But this time I'm actually going to go through the lessons because I care about Gemini. Mercury, not so much. Uh, so let's go through the pre-launch and proceed from there. I've done it before. Mm, I've done it before. No, okay, I'm going to skip that one. All right, we're going to start with Ascent. Ascent of a Titan. Very good. Repeat the steps we learned in lesson one. However, instead of me telling you what to do, we'll use the provided checklists. That's fine. Okay, uh, mission pad, checklists, pre-flight, run. Okay, ma main battery, one up. Oh, it's over there. I'm gonna have to go back and forth between the pilot and the... Uh, okay, but this time I better not... Oh, uh, wait, up, 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 up. Squid battery, up. Nope, up, up, up. Okay, good. Oh, there it is. All right. I remember this now. Okay, fuel cells are powered up. Time to retro has been updated. What, 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 what? Commander seat. Uh, up. MDIU. Okay. Squib boost insert. Uh. Let me just click all the things they highlight quickly so that I can actually launch in time. Uh, cool, prime. Okay, that must be in the pilot seat and I just can't see it from this angle. Or, oh, no, it's up there. My camera's ca uh, steadily going awry. Oops. Didn't need to do that. Suit fan down. Computer mode. A sense. Okay, double check core 19 to make adjustments if needed. Okay, right. Uh, that seems to be one hour, so that's fine. So, that's good. No problems, I think. Alright, I think we're, we're done with that checklist then. Good times. So, back. Um, next is insertion anyway. So, we're ready to go. I was supposed to tell... Uh, tell everybody that I'm ready to go. Ready to launch. Ten, well, nine, we're on countdown. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Off we go. Okay, back to commander seat. First 100,000 feet start with altimeter. Okay, altimeter down there. Roger. We are definitely going up. Very important. Fuel and oxidizer indicators. Okay. And that's for the current stage. Fuel level indicates time left to the staging. Okay. G forces are within limits. Not like I could do anything about it, I suppose. But that's longitudinal acceleration. I wonder why it's on engine 2. Shouldn't it be on the engine 1? The two engine ones? Okay. If you have low voltage, something is wrong. Cabin and suit temperature is also important to know. Yeah, they look in the middle. Cabin pressure and CO2 level should be frequently monitored. 
Okay, let me go to the commander. Oh, well, center panel. How about that? Five point. Well, five ish. We're at five. CO2 is fairly low. Suit temperature is pretty darn high. 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Cavern temperature is really high, too. Well, we. Yeah, we don't need to cabin recircular it. Yet. Oh, two stages. Roger, staging. Okay, we have staging and back to the commander seat. Ooh, it always puts me too far to the left. Um, we can see that we've got fuel levels on engine two. We saw it go red on engine one when it staged, so that's right. Yeah. Yeah, we got separation. Building orbital speed. Equipped with translational thrusters in addition to attitude. Yep. Monitor stage two propellant. Indeed. Uh, our altimeter is totally off now. I mean, we're past 100,000 feet. Speaking of which, altitude check. 137 kilometers. Once we reach orbit, the computer will calculate the distance left to enter the initial parking orbit based on the flight plan. On the left side, just below the indicator, you can see IBI. Once stage two is complete, the computer will show you the difference between uh, the difference using three values here. Do this once we have a successful stage two cutoff. Alrighty. Well, we're getting down there on the fuel. We're pretty horizontal. Actually, pitched down a little bit. Roger, Seco. Okay, so it reads that we've got a difference of eight and thirteen feet per second. Okay, separate stage two is done manually, huh? Sequencer light illuminating. Oh, sequ okay, well. Uh, I guess it's, oh, that one. Uh, let's go to center panel. Uh. All right, we have separated, Roger. Yeah, 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 we did that. This will use the squibs and pyros to separate stage two. Understood. Roger. Jettison the horizontal horizontal horizon. Sorry. Scanner covers and the protection cover up front. I guess that's the fairing. Yep. Did it do that? The platform will snap into the new orientation at this point. Okay, good. All right, commander seat. IVIs are controlled using the computer and is used frequently throughout the mission. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to get to the correct planned orbit. Use a system called OMS, Orbital and Attitude Maneuvering System, I think it is. We will get back to the Ohms and RCS system in the orbital navigation lesson, but for now, just follow instructions. Understood. By the way, what's our altitude? 185 kilometers, okay. Two switches, right. Okay, Ohms up. And enable power to the system using that. Boom. Okay, you don't have to do that. Whatever you're doing. Bump into the translational joystick. Uh, why is it sounding like it's doing something? I don't want it to do anything. Oh god. We've got now more of a deviation. Oh jeez. Uh, that's definitely a thruster stuck. Hold on. External. Uh, yeah, we're, uh... Oh, okay, there we go. I think that oh no that now now it's going forward oh shoot 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 how do I stop that uh, is that okay now no thrusters please 
Okay, it seems like it's all right. Always nice to have an external view. I'm sure they could have done well with that if on a Gemini 8 or something. Okay, don't worry too much about zeroing them out. And we've completed ascent. Next, we will be doing the orbital stuff, right? Oh no, electricity. Capsule is powered by two systems. Primary power source is from two, two fuel cells. Secondary system is from four silver zinc batteries. Fuel cells are installed in the adapter section of the spaceship while the batteries are in the capsule. The fuel cell is using a system called reactant supply system that supplies cryogenic oxygen and hydrogen to the fuel cells. Ionization of these substances produces electricity and water. Okay. The two fuel cells are capable of running the spaceship alone, but since they're located in the adapter, it will be separated before the retrograde burn. From the retrograde burn to re-entry, the batteries will be used. The power sources can be configured using the switches on the right panel in front of the, of the pilot, really. Okay, <laughs> of course the pilot doesn't fly the thing, but anyway. There are two fuel cells installed. These are named fuel cell section one, those and section 2. It's 2A, 2B, and 2C. Right. You can turn each stack inside each fuel cell on and off in case of a malfunction. However, these are all typically on throughout the flight. You can immediately see the load on each stack. Let's zoom in a little bit. Yep. Voltmeter. If this is low on one of the stacks, you should shut down in danger uh, for danger of fire or explosion. Well, I mean, that voltmeter seems pretty low, all right. You can use the DC voltmeter selector knob below the voltmeter to select what stack to monitor. Oh, okay, we're not actually monitoring anything right now. Okay, 1B. Well, that's 1B. Okay, well, now it's reading volts. That's good. Your monitoring routine. Okay, let's check them all. Alright. I wonder what the other ones are then. 1A is down. What the heck? Why is 1A low? Yeah, 1A is completely off. Cryogenic reactant, cryo gauge to monitor the RSS, middle section of the panel. Oh, there. Cent center panel. Oh, wow, there's not much, is there? Off by default, turn on the cryo selector knob below it. Okay, so that's O2 levels. So that's the quantity of O2 and pressure of O2. And then hydrogen levels. Okay. It's uh, an involved deep topic. No kidding, we've got all these switches all over the place. Flight manual for more details, right? The other power source are the batteries. There are four batteries installed in the capsule. And th that's, that's those over here. The main batteries that we had and we always have to flick on. And we did learn about them in lesson one. Each main battery has a test switch. Where are my test switches? Set to battery test. Oh, is that that one? think so. That's supposed to be battery test. You can set the battery switch to test. Okay, where is the battery switch? Oh, that one. Okay. I see. So we switch this to BT and then if we switch this to test, we get the volts on that battery. What if we do two? 
Well, it looks like we get the average or something. It's easy to forget that the batteries need to be turned on again before adapter separation. Battery powered tail light on the central panel will illuminate to remind you of this. Where are you, battery powered tail light? Well, I suppose we'll see it light up when I do something wrong, so that's fine. Alright, we are done with that one. Okay, next. Navigation. Now, this is serious. Electricity is fine, right? Okay, good. Navigation. Oh, we're gonna read the Gemini flight manual by the end of this, yeah. A uh, spaceship can be controlled about pitch, yaw, roll, and translate, yeah. Alter the orbital path, yep. Yeah. Orbital mechanics in the oral mechanics lesson. I know all about orbital mechanics. That's what Kerbal Space Program is all about. In this lesson, we'll fo focus on how the ship can orient itself in space, okay? The propulsion system is receiving firing commands and is the system that actually fires the correct thrusters. Propulsion system receives commands from the add to control and maneuvering electronics, ACME. And ACME receives input from other systems. The other systems can be the hand controllers, the inertial guidance system, or the horizon scanner and the computer. The IGS provides an inertial platform for the flight director and attitude indicator. Horizon scanners, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. They need to align for two minutes. Acme, yes, main interface. To controlling the attitude can be configured in the center pedestal, set it to direct. Okay. Two main sets of thrusters installed. Uh, one is in the adapter and retro section named Ohms, and that's the primary attitude control system. The other is the RCS system in the capsule that's used during re-entry. Manual control can be obtained by setting the attitude control to either rate command, direct, pulse, and re-entry rate command. Okay, yeah, those are there. To, enable, uh, to be able to fire the ohm system using the stick controller, you need to enable the ohm system. Let's do this now. That's flicking those two. I know. You told me before. No, not that. Oh god, I did that thing. I always accidentally flick the RCS. I hope I didn't mess things up. Okay. Now with Acme set to direct, the ohm is enabled. You can alter the attitude of your ship using... Okay, so that's the attitude control. Let's test. Okay, I'm definitely altering attitude. I do need to reverse the pitch axis though. Yep, that all checks out. Rate, command, and pulse. See the difference between the modes. Okay, rate, command. Ah, that recenters it. It'll stop the rates if, uh, yeah, so it'll automatically stop it. It's like SAS. <laughs> rate, command is SAS. Okay. Pulse will only fire the thrusters for 20 milliseconds for each st stick deflection. Okay, so basically one pulse. So it's a discrete, it's sort of a, yeah, the discrete amount. Then set the IGS mode above to Ceph. This stands for sharp end forward. <laughs> Pointy end forward, yes. Automatically, oh, so that's prograde. Okay, so this is all SAS now. Okay, so if we put it to platform and that, that's prograde. Okay, got it. Try to move to prograde position? Yeah, the roll could do so with some work, but it's alright. Stars out. Can't really see the horizon or anything. Attitude can be read using the flight director and attitude indicator. There are two of these installed. Yes, one for each. 
set the commander FD AI source to plat, and this will tell the system that we want to receive signals from the platform. All right. But that's radar. You wanted me to put it to plat. I'm so confused. Then set the data we want to attitude. Okay, this will set. Oh, but but you wanted it there. You said so. But it's only white if it's here, and that's not right either. You should point to be prograde BEF for retrograde. Actually, let's try BEF. Back and forward. Sharp end forward and back end forward, or butt end forward, I don't know. Big end forward, maybe. Rate will show the angular rates you currently are rotating at, and mix will combine them. Oh, I see, I see. It's these yellow indicators. You can see the amount of propellant for the various propulsion systems using the prop gauge with the selector knob. Well, I see the propellant quantity thing, which is currently at zero, but we need a selector. Set the selector to ohms to see the propellant in the ohms system. Okay, well, we, we know the selector has to have an ohms choice. Oh, it's over there. That's why. That that's not really navigation. That's not what I was looking for here. Okay, that's control basically. I, I know how to now control it. But not really navigate with it. We really need to use the computer for that. So no no no, that's jumping ahead. So the computer. Alright, so let's learn about the computer. Welcome to the computer lesson. Uh, used as a navigation aid throughout the mission, binary fixed point stored program, general purpose computer. Uses input from many other systems in the spaceship. Auxiliary tape memory can load various modules from a tape into the computer memory. Typically, each phase of the mission has a dedicated module. Computer is controlled using the computer selection on the center pedestal panel. Right here. The on-off switch gives the computer power, right there. The mode switch is used to select the module to run. Yep. It's it's interesting, I wonder if they ever thought about putting a shield on it to prevent somebody from knocking the computer off or something, but... Then again, with all the switches, I guess they just naturally have to be careful, but then, they, you know, it gets a little bit messy in here. Over 14 days on on that mission, uh, one mission at least. The start button will start the computer when the module is loaded. The loading can take up to 10 minutes with exception of the pre-launch module and the ascent module that is instantly loaded. And they're indicating by the capitals which one it is. That's pre-launch and that's ascent. Those are instantly loaded. I wonder why those are instantly loaded but the others can't uh, be instantly loaded. It's interesting. The aux tape run indicator light. Ah, it's over here. Okay, aux tape run indicator light shows that the tape is running, meaning the module is loading. It is not possible to start the computer when a module is running. If the computer should fail, mouth will illuminate. Mouth. Malfunction. If this happens, you can reset the computer using the reset button. Okay. When a module is loaded, you need to press the start. Uh, press start to start running the computer. Okay. Computer is controlled and modified by checking the and changing memory values directly. To do this, you can use the manual data insertion unit to visualize data in memory or what you are inserting you can use to use the display. Uh, okay. The display unity needs to be turned on using the power switch on the display itself. It is located. Yes, got it. Let's try to operate the computer. Okay, so turn on the computer. It's saying power switch, yep. Roger. Display unit. Uh, it will spend 20 seconds on self-tests. Okay, I'm looking at the display unit, but which mode? I mean, ascent is the normal mode. I mean, as mode one, so I guess maybe it wants that. Okay, yeah, it says that on the last sentence. 
So hopefully I did that right. Okay, start. Start. Memory location. I wonder if they have all the memory locations in here. That would be nice. But I don't think so. If they just had a list. But anyway. 98. Apogee. Sometimes it helps you to remember it if you write it down. Okay, so 98. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Read out. Okay, well this is above the core of the earth, you know, the center of the earth, right? 6,716. That's including the diameter of the earth. Or radius of the earth. Okay, well... Should we clear first? 99. Read out. So, 6,680. Okay, core 56 and 57 is used to see the target orbit we want to achieve. Okay, 56. Can also be set during the mission to help you go into a new orbit. So that's 6532, that's pretty low orbit. I mean, it's lower than we're at right now. Input pointer will be at the first digit. Press to zero. Not much will change, yeah, because we just inputted that zero. Six, five, zero. Aha, that changed. And five. Yes. So we have changed our target orbit. Computer will automatically set the inserted value to AP or PE based on if it's higher than the other value. If AP is 6570 and you set PE to 6580, 6580 will go to AP instead. That's smart. It's a smart little computer. This is how you operate the computer. Well, I need to know all the other addresses. Oh, I have to look at the Gemini flight manual to know all that. 